Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to explain what to consider before setting up a holding company. So holding company is basically a company that's holding other companies. That's one of their usage. And usually we'll start with this kind of scenario where we have an entrepreneur who owns an operating company. That's it. Now, there comes a time where having a holding company can become useful. Let's say if you have accumulated profits within your operating company, you could want to protect them and create a holding company, which leads to a structure that looks a bit more like this one, where the holding company now owns the share to the operating companies, which, which is responsible for providing the goods and services. So as you can see, they have two different goals and they are not used the same, but both of them are incorporated companies. Now that is said, we have to keep in mind that having a holding company, there's pros and cons, which is what I'm going to talk about today. So one of the pros is that it's easy to manage. A holding company, because it doesn't provide any services or goods, is easy to manage. There's barely any transactions happening. So it's kind of straightforward of a vehicle. So once you create that, in terms of the operations, it's very simple. You'll have to create a bank account for the holding company. It will have its own accounting, its own financial uh, taxes and financial declarations to do. But it's much easier than managing an operating company because really there's no business expenses to do because we're not creating any new income with it. That's for the pro. It's also very useful if you plan on having an expansion. So if you're a business owner, you already have one operating company. If you're planning on opening different locations, having a holding company is great because you can basically connect all your different entities to the same parent company. Parent company, holding company, same definition. And if you're planning on growing your business, you may have partners looking to invest only in a particular company, not the original one. And that's when having the holding company allows you to kind of have that one parent company, which is connected to all your different projects. Could be related to your main business, could be a second location, a third location, but also, it's useful as a way to go ahead, put your extra profit in a parent company, and then you can go and reinvest it in other projects. So it could be completely different companies that you have there. Also, when it comes to that, it's ideal if you are a business owner, you've been in business for a while, you've started to accumulate profit, there could be risk related to your activity. Having a holding company allows you to really go ahead and protect your assets. As an entrepreneur, it's important to think about the short term. Yes, generating more money, getting more clients, making sure that you're expanding, but also thinking long term where you should go ahead and save and invest money for your eventual retirement or for when you sell your business. And for this, a holding company is going to be useful for two things. You can go ahead and save your money and invest it over there. But also, if you're planning and eventually on selling your business, you would want to make sure that you are keeping only the essentials in the operating company. As an individual, you also are allowed to benefit from the lifetime capital gain deduction. And to do that, your company has to comply and has to respect certain rules in terms of accounting and the use of your cash flow and your assets. And having a holding company can allow you to go ahead and make sure that you qualify when it comes to that moment where you want to sell. So these are the benefits from having it. But of course, it's not only benefits, there's also cons. So there's pros and cons, but the cons here are in terms of the cost associated to that. Some clients will wonder, should they go ahead and set up a holding company? Just because you have to think about accounting costs times two. So now not only do you have to pay your accountant to file your taxes for your operating company as you were already doing it, you also have to file your taxes and complete your corporate tax filings for your holding company. They both have their own obligations and that could also add some expenses to manage them. And then you also have the complex structure. So, of course, having a structure like this makes it more complex to manage several bank accounts, several 
tax filing to do. So not every entrepreneur should consider having a holding company because of that. If you're starting out your business for the first time, we don't have any other business activities, we may not recommend having a holding company right away simply because it's a lot of management fees and it's also there's a lot of uncertainty when starting out your business. If you've been in business, whether it's been one year, two years, five years, and you've noticed that you are starting to accumulate profits, at that point in time, it is useful to create a holding company and it will, it will pay for itself because you now have the usage for it. You're going to be able to go ahead and invest that money and generate new interests out of your investments. If you're investing, you're going to be able to buy real estate properties with your holding company. So what I suggest is really to start considering a holding company when it becomes needed. So if you haven't yet accumulated the cash, then there's no need for you to go ahead and have such a complex structure right away. You can always go ahead and do it later. It's also useful if you're doing business with several partners. So if you're not the only one over here, having a holding company will allow to be able to go ahead and take the profit that you need and keep it in your holding and your partner could or could not have a holding company as you prefer. You don't always have to each have a holding. One could have one, the other one not, but this will provide you for some flexibility if dividends were to be issued. And it comes back to the same question. If you're starting your business with a partner, whether you're two or three, if for now you have no idea if you'll be generating profits, there's no need to do it right away. You can always go ahead and create your holding company later in time. When you create your holding company, as I mentioned earlier, it's just like a regular incorporated company. So for these reasons, the process is kind of similar, can be done online and also you'll have to pick between a federal company or a provincial company. And then you go ahead, create it. You get your articles of incorporation. You get your minute book for it. You go ahead and you open your bank account. You'll have to pick your financial year end, and then you'll be good to go. The holding company, because it doesn't provide services or sells good, does not have to register for GST, HST, and also will not be the one who's paying you a salary. So there's no need also to to be registering it for the deductions and the employee taxes and all of these things. So that's it for today's video. We looked over at what is to be considered before setting up your holding company. If you are looking to create a holding company, you're wondering how to integrate it to an existing operating company, not sure if you need one, reach out to me for a consultation and we can look over at your situation and see if it's the best structure for you. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.